Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, today we're going to start on a teaching on salvation. I uh, have to divide, divide this up into three parts, three distinct uh, parts. And you might be asking yourself, why in the world do we need to preach on salvation, teach on salvation? Uh, well, mainly because there's a whole lot of hidden things in the plan of salvation that is not known or being taught nowadays that we're missing out the uh, fullness and completeness that Jesus died for. And also along with that, we're creating a whole lot of uh, strife and div division in the body of Christ. And it's just, we're just not into the fullness of salvation the way we should be. Uh, I've divided this up. First of all, uh, into three parts. First, The first part, uh, discussing what salvation is or what salvation uh, and the uh, second part we're going to deal with uh, the different phases I guess you use the word of salvation I call it I call it the four R's when we'll get to that section and the third uh, part of the series will be the faith process in salvation and to to open it up begin by just in fact this probably was my motivating uh, factor wondering why there were so many different uh, beliefs concerning salvation and why one believed this and one believed that and you got all sorts of you got to do this to be saved you got to do that to be saved and or the other extreme you, you don't do anything to be saved <laughs> or, or, or your parents save you as a baby and get baptized and so uh, uh, I was curious about all these different factors one of the one of the things I bring out uh, as question, for example, using it as for example, is the the hot topic once once saved always saved, and uh, well, you ask ask me, what what do I believe in? Once saved always saved, or can I or can you lose your salvation? Well, I say yes. <laughs> to, yes to what? <laughs> Well, yeah, I believe once saved, always saved, and I also believe you can lose your salvation. And uh, you understand it better as we go go along. I'm not trying to act silly or something. Uh, it's just that there's missing pieces of the puzzle that would that would give understanding, because the scriptures that uh, illustrate that you can lose your salvation there that's in the bible also the scriptures that refer to guarantees that people uh will cling on to it that there's their salvation they hang on to they cling on to that's in the bible too and so uh where we have these controversies but nobody ever wants to look into uh the middle uh missing piece that's what I want to say the missing piece of the puzzle and uh, well I think uh, or a couple of scriptures I want to go to uh, first of all let me go to uh, uh, Romans 10 but I love this verse uh, just what not even the full verse full uh, just a part of of it. Romans 10 and 15 says 
as it is written, How beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. Amen. Um, now, the thing that I, I really love about this thing is because it has it, it has the phrase the gospel of peace and this this is a, a direct quotation from Isaiah 52 and it the word peace looking it up the uh, in the Hebrew in the Old Testament is Salom which means primarily <coughs> completeness and that's the reason I went to this this particular scripture because there's a complete gospel and a whole lot of what is being taught uh, I guess they call them evangelicals or whatever uh, that you say a sinner's prayer and you're saved well that's the beginning of the process but the thing I'm trying to present here is maybe I, I don't have all the doctrine to make the get the complete gospel but a complete door gospel of what is already being presented and so uh, like I guess I'm going to start with Try to follow the route that the Lord has revealed these things to me, and I give you a lot of teaching. The guy that showed me over many years, uh, and like I say, my motivating factor was why in the world do so many people believe so many different things? And uh, I have to throw this in here too because. And this was the other scripture I wanted to, throw, to get started with, was what Paul said in 1 Corinthians 13. 1 Corinthians 13, verses 9 and 10. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part, but when that which is perfect is come, that which in part shall be done away. Okay, in 1 uh, Corinthians 13, Paul says, We know in part and we prophesy in part. When that which is perfect is come, that which is part should be done away. Uh, the reason I bring this scripture up is that we have a partial in our understanding of what God has revealed to each and, each and every one of us and nobody has the uh, complete understanding what, whatever subject you're talking about whether it be a salvation the end times uh, that's always a controversial subject uh, you you have not been given the fullness of the fullness of the Godhead, which is Jesus. Uh, it says, when that which is perfect has come, that's referring to Jesus, when the second coming comes, then you'll get the full revelation. Now you got a part. This one over here's got a part. And uh, if we would have any common sense and spiritual maturity, we would learn how to put those parts together to get the greater whole. And... Uh, Likewise, in, in salvation, why do why do one believe this about salvation and one believe that about salvation? Uh, the difference is there's reason for the the reason for the differences, uh, and we need to should should. Uh, look into the, the things that are separated as apart, the missing puzzle, rather than creating strife and, and division. And so, I'm wanting to deal here with a deeper understanding of salvation. 